Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome again to day number three of grand final of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020. Yesterday, I just show you the game where Hikaru Nakamura uh, lost to Daniel Dubov and uh, he was in the must win situation now. Okay, if he wants to, you know, win this tournament, he has to win this game, maybe another or maybe, you know, win in Armageddon. Uh, however, first he has to win one of these two games and Daniel Dubov also told okay as white I can go for a for a draw however Hikaru Nakamura definitely gonna get crazy he's gonna go crazy and uh, and and you know play some kamikaze stuff uh, so so Daniel Dubov also wants to win so both players wants to win the, the, this game no draws uh, and uh, and that's that's the that's the plan for both of the players uh, so definitely we are gonna have some great show uh, on the board and indeed it just happened uh, so without further ado let's see what happened on the board uh, Daniel Dubov plays as white so we have c4 e5 knight on c3 and now knight on c6 we had many times knight on f f6 also uh, and then a four knights variation however we have knight on f3 and here Hikaru goes for the three knights variation uh, and he starts with f5 so uh, he gonna advance on the king side he gonna move the, the f5 pawn so definitely something very very serious we have d4 by Daniel Dubov uh, and now e4 so uh, look at this two armies you know just pass each other uh, going here and, and that looks already a uh, pretty unorthodox to me we have knight on g5 by uh, daniel dubov and now bishop on b4 pinning the knight uh, and actually the main line here main line here uh, is as follows knight on h3 and after knight on f3 uh, just e3 very harmonious uh, just exchange this bishop play something like d6 knight on f4 uh, and this is just you know the correct way of playing this opening however daniel dubov's go for d5 attacking the knight knight to e5 and here peter Svidler said he knows this pawn structure because um, when he was young he was told the uh, that this pawn structure can be very very nice uh, and very aggressive unorthodox opening so uh, this bishop usually belongs to e7 okay because d6 is coming bishop stays on e7 so uh, Hikaru managed to bring the bishop on b4 outside of this you know uh, d6 move so uh, definitely it's some advantage however uh, maybe not really or maybe Daniel Dubov just knows this position because we have queen on b3 and it's quite a novelty it wasn't played before on the top level uh, before was played something like queen on a4 which looks more logical because also kicks the bishop uh, but also blocking pinning the pawn um, from advancing to d6 that would be you know pretty annoying pin uh, however we have queen on b3 and now bishop on c5 retreating but still keeping the bishop in the in the active square uh, and now knight h3 uh, in the spirit of this opening the knight uh, want to have eventually go to uh, f4 uh, we have knight on f6 and now knight a4 that's not really in the spirit of this opening however it makes quite some sense because now this bishop has nowhere to go and has to retreat uh, to e7 uh, we have bishop on f4 now attacking the the knight and the best what Hikaru Nakamura could do in this uh, position actually is play d6 d6 uh, really good move uh, because after e3 the game can simply continue and black stands slightly better especially with these knights you know uh, far from the uh, from the action and uh, Hikaru has the beautiful placed the knights in the center uh, of course bishop on e5 is not really great because d takes on e5 and this pawn uh, you know massive avalanche you know gonna attack the the king side uh, that would be just insane so uh, we have knight on g6 attacking the bishop however uh, Daniel Dubov doesn't care and he simply plays d6 okay so not playing d6 by black allows actually d6 by white uh, we have c takes on d6 and it's not you know dream position uh, of black this pawns actually works as a blockers uh, this bishop has no squares this bishop also doesn't have much squares this knight uh, really cannot you know goes anywhere 
it's pretty bad position. And uh, Daniel Dubov played knight on c3 and Hikaru toad for a while uh, and he decided to give back the pawn, okay? So he played d5. Uh, the idea, of course, is move also d6 and, and bring the bishop to the game. Uh, which, you know, gonna take a couple of, of, of moves. Uh, so we have e3, Daniel Dubov is not in hurry. Uh, and he said, if you want, you can take also the pawn on c4, but I'm gonna develop my bishop with, without, uh, you, you know, losing the tempo. So this is pretty good for me. Uh, we have castle by Hikaru Nakamura. So move the king to the safety. Rook on d1 now preparing to take the, the pawn. And now we have d6 as planned. Bishop on e2, developing the bishop, and now h6. Important move before moving the, the, the bishop on e6. Of course, the knight could jump over there and, uh, you know, exchange this bishop. So uh, h6 preparation first. We have castle, and now bishop on e6. And now uh, black, of course, can take on, on c4, exchange the, the pawns, and gonna be the pawn uh, up. Of course, this is the, the weak pawn, but still, you know, the pawn is the pawn uh, and here Dubov decided okay so I'm gonna take my pawn back and instead of playing c takes on d5 which Peter Leko said okay did you see that move and Dubov said of course this is this is this is the best move in the position however I thought I can exchange the knights okay uh, I thought I can you know play knight on d5 uh, and then after knight takes on d5 uh, c takes on d5 you know bishop f7 and all is fine with my position I, I love my position however However, uh, I got surprised because Hikaru just play bishop on d5, okay? Uh, and now Dubov said, okay, and, and that was a shock for me. So c takes on d5 and after queen on b6, I stopped to like my position. I just dislike my position now, what to play now? Rook on c1, uh, you know, getting advantage of the of the open file. Queen on b3, exchanging the queens, uh, and now rook f on c8. So very brutal fight for the for the open file. Uh, we have rook on c4, inviting actually uh, black to take the pawn, and but white gonna have you know improved the pawn structure, so not in the best interest. Uh, and now Hikaru play knight on d7, uh, and Dubov said in the commentary section that. Uh, he was expecting uh, Hikaru play more ambitious way if he wants to, you know, win the game. Because the idea of knight on d7 is knight on b6 uh, and just exchange all the rooks on c8, okay? Uh, and it's not really, you know, clear how black wanted to win that. Uh, the more ambitious way, I was checking what could be the most ambitious way uh, and the engine recommends actually knight on e5. Knight on e5. Uh, and this is ambitious way, uh, but maybe in the in the engine eyes, uh, and maybe in the not in the rapid game when players have you know a little time to calculate. Because after bishop on e5, d takes on e5, rook to f on c1, black would have to give up the 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 c file or take uh, on c4. And now uh, this is the more ambitious way, definitely. Uh, but you have to understand the, the, the position. So the knight doesn't play. To enter the game, it needs a couple of moves. So for example, um, king on f1, then the knight have to jump, uh, then the bishop have to move, the knight can jump. So at least five, six moves, you know, to improve the position and black can actually stop this. It looks very, very dangerous with these pawns, but these pawns can be, you know, stopped pretty easily. Uh, bishop on c5 and these blockers are very, very active. This this knight actually attacks on c4 and this pawn also can advance. So uh, this was probably the best way. However, it's not very intuitive, you know, especially in the rapid time control. So we have knight on d7 by Hikaru Nakamura, rook f on c1 and now knight on b6, exchanging the rooks on c8. Uh, and in this position, we have g4. And here Dubov said, okay, now I start to feel my position. I'm starting to get better. And uh, and really, my knight gonna be released. My bishop gonna get the better position. What I need more. So uh, if white actually takes the pawn, then this pawn also gonna be, uh, you know, uh, very vulnerable and gonna fall very soon. So F takes on G4, Bishop takes on G4. And now look at this Bishop. 
the bishop attacks the knight that is the first threat but also can access to to f5 attack this pawn attack the knight and also a lot of plans because can go to e6 with the check uh, and you know defend the d5 pawn so uh, pretty pretty awesome position uh, however after knight on b6 dubov thought okay now my position is so good i want to play for a win the question is if he should go for the win uh because he simply could go uh, for example for something like bishop on f5 let's say uh and after knight on f4 knight on f4 uh bishop f6 and uh, and just exchange you know couple of uh couple of pawns and this position is is pretty much very drawish okay black can try to create the past pawn here but it's not very clear as white have a pretty nice counterplay also um in the center so this is definitely you know not bad position for white and uh, but it would be also difficult to fight for a win but as i said uh, daniel dubov want to go for a win and he play bishop on g3 so what is the idea first he want to preserve the pair of bishop that's the first idea uh, and also keep in mind that this knight is stacked on b6 okay the knight was was kicked from c8 to to b6 and now this knight cannot go anywhere because the bishop controls here all these squares the uh, the pawn also controls the square uh, and also the knight cannot take on d5 because it's uh, actually protected indirectly by the tactic okay uh, so that is the problem also uh, this bishop uh, cannot really move anywhere you know create any threats to take on b2 uh, because d6 is hanging and now this pass pawn would be very very uh, powerful as it is uh, really really advanced so uh so so that was the idea however daniel missed actually knight on h4 pretty creative move now the idea of this move is remaneuver the knight the only piece which actually is free because uh, the knight is stuck the bishop is also stuck so uh can go to f3 uh, and then d2 uh, and then attack the pawn uh, and also win some maybe some material on the on the queen side so that's the idea and now uh dubov told like okay maybe king f1 maybe but i was very low on time and it was very difficult to calculate that all of that uh, variations um, because after knight on f3 uh, king on e2 uh, and then uh, the game could continue probably something like g6 knight on f4 as planned uh, now maybe knight on e5 attacking the bishop so bishop on e6 king g7 and the game can continue and it's very very complicated rich in a lot of ideas and uh, and yeah that that was just difficult to uh, to calculate all of that so uh instead we have knight on f4 and then he said okay give give me a break i just wanted to move this knight whole game because you know it's stuck over there uh, at the beginning of the game so i just wanted to move it so we have knight on f4 uh, and now knight on f3 as planned king on g2 knight on d2 uh, and now a bishop f5 bishop f5 what else could daniel dubov play actually uh, not easy to spot but uh, this knight have a very very nice path to the to the you know uh, to the victory maybe not the victory but very active gameplay because knight on e2 and then the knight can look what the knight can do can jump and it looks you know like the like the you know path for the victory to win three pawns and and black can do not much about that there are of course other other variations uh however look at this so for example knight on e2 knight on b3 and now knight on c3 starting of that uh, and if knight on d2 defending the first point uh then white actually can go you know from the other side so uh knight on b5 attacking d6 pawn attacking uh, a7 pawn and for example after king on f7 uh just exchange couple of pawns knight on d6 knight on d5 let's say uh knight on b7 and the position is still you know pretty complicated white maybe would have some advantage with the pawn of bishop but these knights in the center are also very very scary very active so uh unlikely probably that would be a draw or some blunder as the players are really low 
go on time. So uh, this could be the plan. However, we have bishop on f5 immediately uh, going after the e4 pawn, knight on b3, uh, bishop on e4 and now knight on c4 attacking the pawn uh, on b2. And here very natural move, knight on d3 defending. And here in studio Peter Fiedler said, did you see the resource, the only resource you have because now this is much better for black uh, to win this pawn and march these past pawns, connected past pawns. So have you seen, you know, a uh, bishop on c2? What a resource. And Dubov said, yes, but I scared, you know, knight on a1. Uh, and now uh, after bishop on d3, what to play next? Uh, because knight on b2. Uh, and, and Peter said, knight g6, knight g6. And Dubov said, yes, I, I see that. But but what is that? That is that is not much here, okay? Because king f7 and I have no moves. Uh, and Peter Fiedler said, actually knight on h8 and you are you are safe here okay you you can draw and then dubov just said okay that would be the end of my career you know nobody plays like that and if you if i find something like this so definitely i use the engine so so that was uh, impossible to spot you know especially in the rapid game with the seconds on the clock so so what is the idea? After king on g8, let's say knight goes back to, to g6, we're gonna have a threefold repetition. If king want to go to, for example, f6, that would be a disaster because after bishop on g6, cutting the way of the, of the king, uh, now the bishop on h4 is coming and winning this bishop, okay? Nothing can be done about that. For example, knight on c4, bishop h4 and, and winning this, this bishop, okay? So, uh, the king couldn't go to f6, would have to go probably to, to I don't know, f8, but that's also a draw with the check, so uh, maybe e8, but it also doesn't work. Bishop b5 now, uh, and after king on d8, knight f7, and as you see, uh, the king is in trouble, so uh, king on c7, but now e4. And this is just wonderful move. Now e5 is coming. If black not gonna take it, uh, then the pawn gonna, you know, advance. That is gonna be very, very strong protected past pawn. Uh, and if gonna take, uh, then of course the bishop comes with check, uh, with the attack on the knights, of both knights, uh, on this pawn. So uh, definitely disaster. Can try to kick the, the bishop, but, uh, but it's still, and move to d7. Uh, but it's still e5 is coming and it's very very strong so uh, that would be actually losing uh, so beautiful resources with the bishop on c2 uh, and moving the the knights to you know uh, h8 and a1 that would be a uh, pretty crazy knights in the corner never put the knights in the corner but but yeah daniel dubov of course plays more human move knight on d3 defending b2 uh, we have a5 now Hikaru Nakamura just advanced, gonna create the past pawn and win the game. So how he did that? We have bishop on f3, b5, uh, bishop on d1 attacking the knight, so knight b on d2, uh, and now b3 attacking this knight, so uh, disconnect the, the pair of knights, knight on b6, and now knight on f Four. Knight on f4, not really sure what was the idea, probably some waiting move as Dubov could play something like knight on c1, uh, bring the knights to defense, but uh, it wouldn't help at all, so it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we had knight on f4 uh, and after a4, uh, exchanging the pawns, uh, then knight goes back to d3. Uh, we have a3, now knight on b4. Uh, controlling a2 so now knight on d5 beautiful deflection now the knight of course cannot take as the pawn would advance so knight on a2 uh, and now king on f8 so bringing the king you know to the game we have bishop on a4 and Dubov said okay you shall not pass uh, and king on f7 wouldn't be as great because after king on f7 e4 is on the board okay and the knight would have to go to, to some passive position. And if black decide to take that pawn, that would be that would be disaster, actually. Because after taking the pawn, uh, this knight, keep in mind, defended b3. So bishop on b3 now. And this knight is pinned. And you cannot save that knight. Because after king on e6, yes, you save the knight for the moment. But knight before. Uh, and what are you going to do next? Knight on f6, defend, just exchange the knights. Okay, bring the king to, to e4, win the knight and the game. 
uh, and the bishop still controls a2 so that would be really disaster going for king f7 uh, is not in the you know interest of black so the king is stuck on f8 for now uh, and we have knight on e4 blocking any moves you know like like e4 uh, we have bishop on b3 attacking the knight but knight is not pinned and king can freely move to c3 now attacking the blocker on a2 which have to be remaneuvered so knight on b4 now both pieces you know uh, defense a2 but now we have knight on d2 kicking the bishop and if bishop want to stay on this diagonal have to move somewhere to e6 the problem is now we have d5 d5 blocking the way of the bishop so now bishop cannot watch um, you know on a2 uh, and of also this pawn cannot be taken if it's taken by the by the knight then the pawn gonna advance and if by the bishop then of course uh, gonna lose the bishop and the game as the pawn gonna advance as well so uh, we have knight on c2 attacking the pawn and also uh, defending a1 knight on c4 defending the pawn uh, and here we have e4 attacking the, the central pawn however it's too late we have a2 uh, e takes on d5 and now bishop on d6 so the idea for hikaru nakamura is simple exchange all pieces create the the queen uh, and, and and just win the game uh, we have king on f3 king on e7 and now uh, knight on a1 could be played but i will just show you it just doesn't work because after knight on a1 uh, we have bishop on g3 first and after exchanging king d6 idea is very very simple win this pawn and the game as black would have you know more pieces on the king side as this knight is stuck on a1 and cannot help okay whenever the knight moves then black also gonna promote so uh that's of course impossible to do so uh we have bishop on f5 just it also doesn't work so doesn't matter what uh, white actually plays that we have knight on b5 and now uh, still knight on a1 still doesn't work but for different reasons now simply knight d4 exchange the knights this is the this is the just simplest way bishop a3 and now win this knight promote and win the game so uh, here are the ideas but it doesn't work bishop on d3 also doesn't work but this is where daniel dubov tries to play uh, but now knight d4 another deflection but this time is ending the game because it's check and also you know the knight is under attack so knight has to take on d4 but now we have the queen uh, and daniel dubov tries to you know uh, create some fortress with the pair of bishop uh, but it doesn't work nothing works here actually after knight on f5 king on f6 uh bishop on c4 winning this knight uh, however now bishop g3 and in this position daniel dubov resigned the game uh, and he resigned because after knight on g3 uh queen can come to c3 win the bishop and of course the game there are no pair of bishop to create the fortress there are you know uh, not even two minor pieces to try it's just the queen against the the knight so in this position daniel dubov resigned the game so hikaru nakamura uh, managed to actually win this game we have a draw uh, in the fourth game it was real draw uh, hikaru nakamura uh, played as white but he was thinking okay i'm gonna just draw uh, and as always i go for armageddon as black and i'm gonna win this tournament so uh, what happened next uh, if you want to know uh, press subscribe smash the bell button and thanks for watching and see you in the next one